directly above the Hollywood sign. It's Kren Ben's Friend Trends with Aaron Crennan and Ben Lepley, the working model of a healthy friendship. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Kren Ben's Friend Trends. My name's Aaron Crennan, and I'm alongside my best friend, Ben Lepley. How you doing, Ben? I'd be a lot worse if I wasn't sitting by my best friend. Aaron Credit. Oh, stop. No, you stop. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we're alongside our friend, Steve Staley. How you doing, Steve? Oh, uh, I'm doing great. Happy to be here. Well, oh, thanks for coming. I'm so I glad. Gonna, no. <laughs> I was going to say glad to be here on Father's Day, but I'm not sure if ti- time matters. Oh, yeah. I don't, know, I don't know if time is really relevant on podcasts. Yeah. I actually always hear on other podcasts that they're like, but by the time you listen to this, that will have already happened. (laughs) It's like a a reoccurring theme in every podcast. It's a a podcast trope. It must be. (laughs) We've actually, uh, listeners should know, we've already done an entire podcast before this. We just weren't recording (laughs) an entire podcast worth of material. We really did. And let's say, we need to start recording. We need to start recording. This is great stuff. This is what happens when you get three guys together just to jab a job around. (laughs) A lot of gabbing, a lot of gossip. A lot of fun. I mean, you got here at two o'clock, and it's three o'clock. We've been talking for an hour. <laughs> literally, really like, that late. <laughs> killing each other with comedy gold and recording none of it. This I, can't I, possibly I, live up to yeah, any of the things. I'm we exhausted did. from it. I'm, <laughs> I might nap through this one. And My side. Let you guys take it. Oh man, what if that was just how everybody marketed themselves? Like, I know this audition wasn't good, but Jesus, me warming up in the lobby. You should have seen it. It was so good, <laughs> and people actually buy it. The casting uh, director's like, yeah, oh. Uh, ben and we have the uh, the footage, for we, the security. We cameras. have the, the lobby cam. Uh, the lobby cam was. You rolling. were great. You were right. <laughs> Listen, yep. I self filmed this. Uh, can you just use this <laughs> instead? How far away would you say? I mean, you're a professional actor. How far away would you say we are from having a holographic technology that allows us to never have to step foot into a casting office ever again? I hear the joke that you're making, and mm-hmm. in fact, I thought that you were just going to be serious about it because I really am waiting for the day when, mm-hmm. like voiceover auditions, you can just. Beam the yourself into it, yeah. Is a white background, mm-hmm. and they send you the script, and you just record your own on-camera commercial. There, audition there's some kind and of like email it. Why bother driving all yeah, over the place? Yeah, some kind of like standardized like camera technology, so it would always look the same. They just tell you how to light the white wall. That like you could even buy like a white cloth that's like perfect. Oh, if they just sold that that package. Oh, that's a great. That's oh guys. Oh, edit this out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This podcast is over. We need to get. <laughs> Talking about if the, the, if the music were to play right here, the end music. Because <laughs> that's a great idea. It just does. Everybody in town would be into it because nobody wants to drive around doing that. Totally. You think they want to throw an audition? They don't want to throw the audition. That's why everybody wants to do voiceover because you don't you don't have to go anywhere really. I mean, if you you it's nice when you do sometimes to see people and get some direction. But if you want, you can just have a microphone in your car, and it's yeah. like it's the easiest thing on earth. Like, that was the greatest. We came up. We both did an internship at Entertainment tonight and mm-hmm. the woman who did the vo for it lived in florida yeah and i was like she's not here and she's like why would she have to be here i was like oh yeah that's so perfect that's over the phone oh, <laughs> yeah. cool that you both did that so i have some questions about that but not not for now no oh, okay we need to get on to some comedy gold but i do have Great. some questions about that afterwards the yeah. the, 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 the after post-cast. party yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the postcast uh, nothing interesting in fact the re- it's nothing interesting enough to every, everybody's podcast. so tired during the postcast it just drags <laughs> it's on exhausting i'm, I'm, I'm on usually real couch. sweaty too uh, and the postcast <laughs> is dripping wet we have the air on for this because we realize that the air conditioning you, it doesn't really get picked up on these microphones but we've had like back in our early days when we really thought any of this mattered it was like oh my uh, God, no. you would stop to turn the air we, off? we better make sure oh. that our guests are uncomfortable oh boy <laughs> we couldn't have the windows open because sometimes planes would fly by or like the the, the driveway is right here so any car that's like yeah. you like, really cared, you really cared, we cared. We, i'd say we cared for three episodes oh really and cared. this is what like episode oh. like 12 13 14 so, 12 oh, yeah yeah it only took three for, before we were like we're being douchebags <laughs> stop and just have some fun hold on we've got to redo that there was a plane flying over <laughs> could you try to recapture that that very natural story could you recapture the essence of that and deliver that line the way you did <laughs> <laughs> fuck you bob hope <laughs> your airport um well steve normally our guests don't go first and we're so excited that you have the energy and the will and the enthusiasm uh yep He's just uh, pantomiming a hand job right now, which is very appropriate. Please tell us that I'm dying to hear a Steve Staley story. I've been waiting for this. Okay. Well, 
thank you for letting me go first. Yeah, I of course. Um, unconventional for your podcast, the name of which I cannot remember because you said it so fast. Can you? I just real quick. I want your best guess as to what it is. <laughs> just try. Just try your best. Wow. <laughs> Ben and Aaron tonight. <laughs> I, we might have a new name. It's, it's, it's Bat. Bat. Ben yeah, and Aaron, Aaron tonight. That's yeah. right. It's Kren Ben's friends. Kren, Kren, yeah, Kren, I actually that. just said it wrong. Kren Ben's friend trends because oh. his last name's Krennen, so it's Kren Ben. Kren Ben friend trends, trends. Friend and they are trend. the trends of our friendship. Yeah. Ah. So the, the, the name makes sense, but Ben and Aaron tonight. I mean, it rolls off the tongue. You really understand what's happening there. Make like, a great Twitter feed. Oh yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. Sorry. Well, I. Sorry, Barb. I was getting a phone call. Oh, man. Let's see where my priorities are. Hollywood. I need to set up for the story. Are okay. you ready for me to go? Yeah, go for oh, it. We're ready. As a plane flies overhead, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> I hear it. For what... Okay, I, for what it's worth, I've not told this story in a long time. Okay. So I make no claim to this to how smooth it's going to be, but, the tr- but it is a true story. And every time I tell it, I think to myself, this doesn't sound true to anybody no really because i lived it it's true oh man those are often like the things that are so unbelievable it's like well that couldn't have really happened right. but only no one would come up with it type but of thing. it's delicious <laughs> so however many years ago i was at coco's on mm-hmm. woodman and roscoe okay for whoever cares about that you guys live here so you kind of have a perspective on what i'm talking about coco is actually a sponsor of this podcast oh in in fact (laughs) why the reason i'm telling this story (laughs) um and i was there uh with my friend uh, Kay. may she she rest in peace don't drink and drive oh man um and we're having a wonderful breakfast and from across the restaurant we hear you're goddamn right I'm not going to pay for it. Oh, no. There's teeth in my eggs. <laughs> <laughs> what? And we looked at each other like one does in Southern California, which is we're being punked. Yeah. This is on TV right now. Mm-hmm. And we heard all this clanking and storming. And this old guy, this old fucker, gets up and comes up to the cash register and and continues his rant about, there's no way I'm paying for this. There's teeth in my eggs. Mm. He said it again. Then the... the um, cook from behind the the counter you can see into the right, yeah, right. into the kitchen he, he says something like yeah right old man there's teeth in your eggs and the guy says you're gonna smart me <laughs> are you gonna smart me i'll turn it in i'll turn it in <laughs> turn it in yeah i'm assuming he meant like to the news or the police yeah he'll call oh, okay <laughs> i've never, <laughs> never heard it phrased like that he'll call coco's and turn it in okay okay i'll call and come up i'll turn it in i'll turn it in <laughs> and i think that segment of this story ended with him fuming out mm-hmm. god damn it i'm not gonna pay for it and he kept saying you put teeth in my eggs there's <laughs> teeth in my eggs <laughs> So he storms out, Uh gets in his car, his old caddy. We see him driving off, and Kay and I looked at each other saying, that's the craziest shit I've ever seen. I can't wait to tell people about this. (laughs) The guy stood up and said, there's teeth in my eggs. Have you ever heard of such a thing? This is insane. So we finish our breakfast, and I look out the window, and I see the copper Cadillac pull back up. And I see the guy get out, oh. and I see him come in the restaurant. No. And I said, get under the table. Oh, <laughs> Steve, no! What? Because this is it. We're going to be part of a shooting. I was like, so get under the table. Jesus Christ. So the guy comes in, and he stands at the cash register, kind of sheepishly, but we, I mean, I was ready, honestly, yeah. to get under the table. Mm-hmm. And he stands there, and he stands there, and we're keeping our eye on him. And keep in mind, the restaurant had more or less turned over at this point. Right. And then he turns to the restaurant, and at the top of his lung says, (laughs) Excuse me, I'd like to make an announcement. (laughs) You're all going to (laughs) die. Before I was in here complaining about teeth in the eggs. (laughs) 
They were my teeth. (laughs) (laughs) And I've come back to apologize to the waitress and the manager and to pay my bill. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Who is this man? And Kay and I both had our napkins up at our face and just eye contact with these wide open eyes like oh my neither of us God. could believe what we were seeing and so he paid his bill uh-huh. i guess and then left and i went home and called as many people as i could call <laughs> to tell them the story and the truth is i memorized it so the way i right. tell it is mm. exact i'm not is exactly yeah. what happened he said you're goddamn right i'm not gonna pay for Amazing. it there's teeth in my eggs <laughs> that alone is a good enough story yeah but when he says before i was in here complaining <laughs> about teeth in the eggs Pause, pause, pause. <gasps> they were my teeth. <laughs> and I've come back to f- apologize and to the pay my the bill and pay my bill. That's my favorite part, and pay my bill. I'm here to rectify the <laughs> mess I made. The mess I made. Also, so I mean, how how old was he? Oh, God bless his sweetheart. He was at least 78 oh, okay. years old. So I mean, he was an old, it was an old yeah. man, a oh, hobbling old man. And, yeah. and, um, and, and of course, the story is funny, but when I told it, to uh, a mutual friend of ours, Jacob, he's like, I don't think that's funny. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's funny at all. He's like, that hurts me. That makes my heart hurt. I feel so bad for that guy. And I was like, well, it is what it is, man. Getting it's not old so much. Sucks. It's not also so much that we're laughing at a man for his teeth falling out. It's the it's the way he booms his voice through the restaurant <laughs> to announce it, Look, and also yes. the pu- and the public apology is so After the waitress. It- I mean, after the restaurant had completely turned over. Yeah, I mean, totally. Half the people in that room were going, they just that part of the story. And they're, they're telling, telling it right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. This guy came in and he said, I'd like to make an announcement. Don't you feel lucky that you have part one and part two of this? I got to see the whole thing. <laughs> you know what? I, it stands. What I what I wish we could have been there for is uh, like the 1.5, which is the old man realizing they in were the his. Car- <laughs> He's like. Oh, I've made a huge mistake. He's just, you, he feels his tongue in the back and there's like oh, a space. Oh, God. What have <laughs> I done? Back at the mirror at his house, like just anywhere. about to his, floss. His wife is like, there's something different about you. He's like, what is it? She's like, you're missing four you're teeth. You're missing some teeth. I mean, hmm. I, I suppose. Connect the dots. <laughs> I suppose they'd have to be like molars or teeth in the back because that would be less noticeable maybe or were they like denture teeth was that it like because you wouldn't feel if like they fell out of a denture then it's really not tragic and jacob has nothing to complain about (laughs) i a denture is just a a i hear what you're saying but i don't know how it is you don't realize they're your teeth the minute (laughs) you look at your that would absolutely be my first when, My you're first going, when you're rolling your tongue around in your mouth going, there's something fucking hard in these eggs. And you realize it's teeth. No, oh, yeah. Oh, you know, I didn't even really think about it like that it, it got into the mash in his mouth. I just assume it trickled out while he was eating. <laughs> okay, yeah, he just saw them on the plate. The of course. Completely, because I was thinking that. I thought there were his eggs cooked, or the teeth cooked into the eggs. But if he was chewing and then his teeth... Isn't that weird we both thought that? I don't we're know why. idiots. Yeah. Like, why would that ever... To be clear, the truth is... Uh, I don't know that. That's true. Yeah, it's, yeah, I have just knows. thought about it enough over time that surely he took a bite of eggs. Mm-hmm. And then felt the, the crunch. Teeth yeah. fell out, mm-hmm. felt the oh. crunch, assumed, and then spit it out and saw teeth and thought, right. motherfucker. Yeah. That guy in the kitchen <laughs> somehow got human teeth and put them in my eggs. Oh my my eggs specifically. What if he was convinced they were like dog teeth, not even human? He's like, he did it on purpose. There is canines, the only the only dogish teeth in the You're mouth. You're gonna smart me. You're gonna smart me. You're gonna me. smart me. I'll turn it in. I'll turn it in. Oh what if he God. came back and had been like, I no longer am smarting. Like it was fun. <laughs> the smarting was a nothing will be turned over. <laughs> I won't turn it in. No, yeah, turn it in. That's it. I won't. Nothing turn it will in. be turned in. No one knows what he's talking about except for Steve and Kay. Oh my um, God. That's amazing. I is, uh, tell me you, you have a tale about teeth. I oh I do. I already told my tooth tale. Oh right. Oh well, you oh, can no. tell it again because no one listens to this. That's true. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I do have a story, uh, kind of, a lot of mine involve college, I found. <laughs> I was in college, uh, you don't know, for like seven years. Like, it was a very long time. Oh, and, like, you were there was, studying like, a, yeah, there was yeah. a prince of Africa that, like, was in play here. There was, like, four different colleges. I wish we could reference the specific episodes. Steve, you have to check out Crenbin's Fred Treads, episode <laughs> nine, uh, minute 23, mark four. <laughs> it is all laid and out, 21 though. 21 frames. <laughs> <laughs> the frame count. <laughs> so this was more or less, well, I think it was my first year at UNI, which was my third college. And that was where Ben and I went to school together. Aaron eventually landed in my backyard. And yeah. It was a great time. <laughs> uh, but. With a degree. Yeah. yeah. Finally. <laughs> uh I had a number of friends that went to UNI as well, so um, they already, like, at this point, like, I was more or less a freshman kind of coming into it, and then they were all, like, they all lived in the house, but I was living they in the- They were all in the graduate program. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they had, like, a house they were living in, and, like, I lived in the dorms with my roommate, and it was just, like, not as fun, so I always would go to these, their house. I was constantly over at their house. And one particular day, uh, we had the great idea, I'm not sure if you guys are either familiar with the Century Club- and it's uh, when you drink a shot of beer every minute for a hundred minutes. Oh my God, no, I never. So heard of it it ends up being, I think, like a shot, like the same size as a shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a shot glass of beer. So mm. it ends up being like nine and a half beers or something in a hundred minutes or something like that. Like I, uh, All right, I mean, a sip, sip, sip. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That and adds uh, up. every yeah. Mi- yeah, every minute that would actually be pretty intense. Around mm. sixty, because there's also oh. the power hour, uh, which is when you do sixty <laughs> of these. And around 60, you realize that it should just be 60. And 100, you're kind of getting into weird territory. Is you start, like, forgetting that you have to take the shot. And if you have to pee, you typically have to come back to, like, three shots. Oh, you, they add up. Oh, away. and you have to do all of them. And it's a real nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> like, it sounds like the best idea when you're not doing it. Even th- now, it probably sounds horrible because it was horrible. I don't mean to speak for you, but I feel like both of us were like, oh, yeah, that wouldn't be so bad. Oh, wait, now that I'm doing the math, oh, my God, no, no, no. Oh, horrifying. <laughs> it yeah, really makes me you, sick to my stomach oh, yeah. hearing it. It really makes you realize how quickly minutes come and oh, go. Because sure. you're like, again? It's like sometimes you'll take one, you'll pour the shot, and then it's like, Do you have to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's and, time to go. Yeah. And there's always like these CDs uh, that are like power hour CDs. You can't really do a full 100 minute CD because they're not that long. But uh, so it was like, it says it tells you to drink, and then there's like songs in between. It's like a minute of the song that it's like take a drink that people would make. People make these. Oh yeah, that was a big thing. <laughs> oh. And then there was a uh, one of them like had a Homer Simpson quote. It was like a whole Homer Simpson quote. Then like so it was only like forty five seconds of the song. Not too important. Anyway, so we do this, mm-hmm. and we were well, like we thought we could drink. You know, a hundred shots like that. We were like kind of toasted. Yeah, but it was early enough in the night, and. Uh, and then we like we ate something, and then we found out about this other party. Uh, they were having like a jungle juice party, and actually it was at the DU house, which is like a. There's not too many frats, and most of the frats are horrible, but uh, this was like just for parties. Like this house, like I think they had like four active members. Oh, it existed for the sole purpose of yeah. um, creating party opportunities. It was insane for that, and so they had this huge. Like, it was by the bars too. It was like the closest oh, okay. one of the yeah. bars, and. Uh, it was actually that's one of the first times I met Xavier actually because he oh. was the one who like would create the uh, jungle juice. Xavier was uh, a good friend of ours and he just helped us with other things. Wait, that's so important. Jungle but... juice is a product, isn't it? Didn't some guy invent it and get filthy rich? I don't. I always thought jungle juice was just kind of created by like grain alcohol, just in copious amounts mixed together. Like yeah, pretty much. Well, the way I don't. I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about, unless it's like a. Is it a bug, frozen thing at all? No, it's a. Uh, uh, it was like a. a oh, you're thinking of Jamba Juice. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been recorded. <laughs> now everyone knows. <laughs> Go, go ahead. I wish they had jungle juice and Java juice for a number of reasons. So it was like this. Mm. It was like you know, it was like Everclear dumped in with like fruit and then like Kool Aid or oh fruits in it. That's what makes it jungle yeah, juice. Yeah, like, uh, cho- like chopped with apples. Yeah, and then mangoes you eat the fruit everything. afterwards and like you just soaked with get alcohol. even drunk drunker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we we go to this party and like we're already drunk from the hundred shots of beer and now mm. we're like going into liquor. I don't, Hard liquor. Yeah, I don't know what that little rhyme is, but it is beer before liquor never, never been, been sicker, sicker and that is gonna come into play. Um, 
So these like these big parties Ooh. like this DU house would have uh, kind of resulted in. Did they ever call the DUI house? Oh, they should have. <laughs> they really should. Can I go back to Cedar Falls and pitch that? Yeah, absolutely. Sell them T-shirts. You know, they're actually thought. <laughs> they're actually they're driving under the house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually no longer a frat. Like the four members, like kind of like one graduated, and they're like, we can't do it with three. Like, what what Greek <laughs> letters are D and U? By the way, oh, yeah. Delta Epsilon. I oh thought. duh. Okay, uh, Delta. Um, sure. I thought Epsilon was E. So. So, well, I right. know it's called. They called it the DU House, and that just might have been like. Ah. Then it was it was oh, Delta Epsilon. Name. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. not quite sure. Okay. Got it. Uh, so then we started doing this jungle juice party, and just like no one's, oh, we're drinking, but because it's like college, we have to. Yeah. And we're not none of like the eight of us who did the Power Hour or the Century Club were having a good time at all. Yeah. Because we we're like so. The like, Power Hour. Every time you say the Power Hour, I'm like, oh, God, praise him. <laughs> <laughs> he is risen. Uh, today's hour of power. Crystal Cathedral. Gulp. Oh Go God. ahead. So we actually, me and my buddy Sebastian, uh, we were both single at the time. We met these two girls at the Ooh party. La la. Yeah, and we're like, and uh, I think mm, we both you. like kind of, uh, <laughs> we start like to make Down out a little under. bit with like off to, in the in the yard, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, oh. and it was getting a little late, and we weren't feeling that well, regardless. But we were like, they were just fresh to the party, and like that's when we met them. But the cops came. Mm. And we're like, oh, it's a great opportunity to not drink anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So we're like, <laughs> run! Late. That's your reason? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that that's the, like, we need to stop drinking. We're so sick. Oh, thank God, the fuzz. Right. And uh, it turns out, so we, we like, ran, like, Sebastian ran one way with his girl, and uh-huh. I ran uh, the other way with the girl I was with, and we, we had, like, climb a fence. We found out we both lived on the same floor in the dorms, oh, wow. but, like, it's a U-shape. It's, like, all the way on their side. So we start talking about, we were like, oh, we should just go back to Campbell Hall. And I was like, oh, that's where I live, whatever. And uh, we got to Campbell Hall, and like, it was one of these really awkward things where like, we probably were about to have sex, but I was far too out of it. Mm-hmm. And I was like still conscious, so, like, I wasn't like blacked out, which is also a strange moment to be in, like being that drunk and not being able to control what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And so we end up in my like, the loft dorm bed, and I pretty much just fall asleep. Mm-hmm. And she's Just like, Just like a man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and she falls asleep next to me. Yeah. And uh, I wake up at around um, four. Four in the morning, and I had just shit everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the first person to say that, but I. I can't relate. Yeah. I mean, I've been drunk before, but I've never lost my bowels. How does that happen? Oh, it was in, it's never happened before or since, but I was like, oh my God. I was Dude. like, I, I don't know. I don't know how long I've been sleeping in my own shit, but it smelled awful. Oh and, no. Wait, and she was still and there. She too. was still, she was still sleeping. And I was like, what am I going to do? I was like, it's far too embarrassing to be like, Excuse so I was like, me. Yeah, exactly. I was like, I have to get these I sheets need, out I need of here. a mow. Fire! <laughs> I, I had, <laughs> My roommate must have shat himself on the way out. That's what that smell was. He was so scared. <laughs> and so after, I was like, think fast, Aaron. And still like kind of drunk from the night before. But I was <laughs> that like, doesn't help. But I was like, oh, puking's believable and not as gross. So I woke mm. her up and I had to get the sheets off. And I was like, and of course, we're like up in the air. So making all of this. Oh, yeah. You like kind of loft. Like a, yeah. And I was like, scooch over. I think I, I think I may have thrown up in my sleep. And I might have even posed it like one of us did. Like one of us <laughs> threw up. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, oh, okay. And I was like, oh, thank God. That was so easy. So like, I roll up this bag or like ball yeah. of like sheets and shit. shit. Cheat, cheat, cheat. And then, like, I was also realizing that, like, I, I I'm shitty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I had to like go shower, and like briefly, and I came back like all clean. And she was like, "Why didn't you just shower?" I was like, "It, it helps me when I'm hungover." <laughs> like, that's this barrel of lies. And then, yeah. So, but like after that, like I would see her in the halls. But I never wanted to talk to her again. Mm, right. And then, like, she, of course, becomes friends with one of my friends, and I would start seeing her all the time. Oh, the shit sheet girl oh, yeah. popping up everywhere. Just, it really just haunted my dreams because mm. I wanted to forget that night. And it was just so horrible. Like, I couldn't, I still can't believe because even now when I'm really drunk, like, super drunk, drunker than I've been then, uh, like people were like, yeah, you just got got up and took a shit. Like you were passed out, then you woke up. Did you remember that? I was like, not at all. It's like, like you, your drunken state, like trained you to never let that situation happen again. Oh right, it's like yeah. a punishment. <laughs> They'll want you to do it once, and then you'll never do it again. Oh but, yeah. but did did she ever 
like, did she know? Do we know if she knew? Did she oh. spread it behind your back? Is it like our friend hmm. we were talking about earlier who got labeled as someone who sleeps around? And <laughs> if so, how did that happen? I don't think so. It never came back to you me. You just and didn't want to go there. You I did really not want didn't. to touch it and move yeah. on. I wouldn't be surprised if she... Like, because she was like, when I woke her up, like, I just kind of came back from the shower and she seemed a lot more awake than when I like, pushed her over to the ah, side. Okay. So she might not even remember, like, the puking thing. Hopefully. I mean, it's, if she was as drunk as you were and, like, you, you could have got away her, with it and yeah. she thought you farted. Yeah. The right. truth is, you did fart. What happened was, <laughs> in, my, in my medical opinion, is you, sh- you sharted. Yeah. You yeah. didn't shit your pants, really. You, sh- you sharted. You're about to get a visitor. Oh, yeah. You sharted. Yeah, but you didn't know, you didn't know because you were drunk and asleep, so you sharted. Exactly. Yeah. As I mean, opposed to a f- unloading. And I think what happened was like it was a shart, and then like my body was like, well, everything else is gonna come out too. Like <laughs> it like turned in. <laughs> it was like a shart turned to shit. I, I don't know because I mean it was just a lot of it. I, I don't. Yeah, it's it very wow. gross. But like and and like because it was beer, it was like I. Like this is also probably too much information, but it was like I had shit out liquid, like liquid poop. beer. Yeah, yeah it was like awful beer poop. Yeah, I feel You're like blowing mud all over your date. <laughs> it's sometimes it, it seems like there's like uh, a gas cork in like your <laughs> like your intestines, and if that gas but, escapes, that's but the that's only thing. Prevent, is what it is. It's like the buffer between you and like the the outside world and the shit. Sadly, so that fart comes out, and that's like the cork popping out yeah, of the champagne and the, bottle. The and, explosion of your Colon. Yep. There you go. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad she didn't say anything to you. I guess we'll never really know for sure if she if she knew. It's okay. I think you can let it go. <laughs> I guess you did let it go. You yeah. Let it go in a big way that night. I'm, but I must say, I have heard this identical story. Have you really? During a time when people were talking about their most embarrassing moments. Oh man. I have heard this identical story. Went to bed with the with the person. Uh-huh. Woke up. Shit all over the place. So you. Are not the only person to whom there might be drunk a support bed group. shit has ever happened. <laughs> I am I am impressed with the mechanics of getting the sheet off without I her waking up. I don't know That's, yeah. how. At least you were unconscious. I mean, I've fucking shit my pants before, fully conscious. Oh no, yeah, no, we've had we've had some podcasts. Let <laughs> me tell you, I have had episode thought, four, frame thirty six. <laughs> it's just a fart. What's yeah. that? I feel on my feet. Yeah, totally. <laughs> It's in a way, it's better that you were out of it and didn't know. I'm just glad I was at my place and not her place, which would have been like, how do I? Oh, can you imagine? Now I, I want to know where left. the where the teeth come in. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you start off by saying this was going to be a story about teeth? That's really what I want to hear. How there the were teeth. there were some teeth in the shit. <laughs> yeah, and I, I had teeth ate a... in my shit. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to turn in these sheets to I'll the washing turn it machine. In. <laughs> I mean, you may have said this, and I may not have heard it. You threw the sheets away, right? You did not. Oh, absolutely. It. Okay. Yeah. I was going to. Oh, that's the other thing because then I had to get new sheets and like there's that like weird dorm bed sheet fitting right. problem. You know the dorm beds they're not twins they're like twin XLs so they're like extra long extra skinny sheets and they're impossible to find except in like August right before people go back to school to find a twin XL sheet set any other time of year is uh, yeah, other, a fool's uh, errand. Online. Yeah <laughs> totally. Um, well, I have that's a, so hot. I have another. Yeah, I'm so hot. Just been <laughs> so masturbating, on right masturbating now. this entire time. <laughs> uh, I. What if you were talking about the the sheet size stuff? Not even any of the bodily function stuff. Yeah, it's just really hard to find these sheets, except for like in August. Oh my fucking god! I'm so turned on. <laughs> that's <right> awesome. Now. <laughs> Fuck! I'm gonna listen to this over again. <laughs> I, have a, I have a Bed Bath and Beyond fetish for specialty objects. Uh, off. <laughs> <laughs> always. Um, I uh, so Aaron and I used to live in a different apartment in Burbank, and before Aaron moved in, I had another roommate named uh, Justin. So I hope he never hears this. Uh, so Justin, he won't. <laughs> oh right. Oh, I forgot. I, I I thought for a second this was a real thing, and, and not what it really is. No, what's going to happen is I'm going to take this recording, put it on a CD, and then shred the CD. <laughs> That'll be the end of it. Nobody has to know. I love how it's like, oh man, you put anything on the internet. It's out there, man, and someone's going to find it. Not this podcast. <laughs> We're pretty safe. I feel pretty confident. <laughs> I actually might, just so that, I want the I want to message the girl on Facebook and be like, hey, listen to episode 12 of this podcast. Enjoy. <laughs> and then she'll be like, okay. She loves the tea thing and thinks it ends there and just turns it off. <laughs> when we said it was ending because yeah. we had that great idea. Oh, right. for the- oh, I guess it's over. <laughs> it's paused. She'll be like, for the last 10 years, I thought I shit the bed. <laughs> 
Oh, that, oh man, that would it the be real something story. if she did and I never knew? Well, you're just like unknowingly covering for her all these years yeah. later. Yeah, she's like, she's so nice. She just pulled down your pants and, and took a shit in your underwear. <laughs> 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 she really, really like, like Sherlocked that one. Anyway, sorry. Oh no, 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 please. Your other roommate. So Justin, uh, Justin had this horrible taste in art. So he would go out and he would uh, buy these, and he lived there for years and years before I did. Our last apartment was like this, this odd turnover of like Mm -hmm. you know five years somebody would move out it stayed in the family but nobody lived there from the original exactly and like that's how it stayed so cheap because the entire lease never turned over so it was always like one like transient individual would sort of disappear into the mist and then someone else would appear who Mm -hmm. wanted a month-to-month situation and it it was uh, but like by the time we moved out like the kitchen all the utensils in the kitchen, nobody knew their or, their origin. And like <laughs> we had like shelves and we didn't know who they belonged to in posters. We and had like, all these pots and pans that we were like thinking the other one of us would take ownership of. Yeah. And they're like, those wow. are mine. Yeah. And it's like, wait a minute, what is ours? I mean, they were they were from the nineties, honestly, because that's when that place was first rented. So yeah, it uh, was a long furnished. Time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it absolutely was furnished. Actually, a sidebar to that story about not knowing where things originated from. So we had these couches that had these giant uh, denim covers over them <laughs> and they're just the worst like they they were so uncomfortable and like you try to nap on them <laughs> <laughs> and uh you, they they'd like slide off because you'd be tossing and turning and they were they were horrible so i'd yeah. always take the denim covers off and like toss them aside and just sit on the couch about three or four years into living there justin was like oh you know i got these couches like off of the street He's like, they smelled weird, and like I just found them, and that's why I kept the... He's like, we, we clean the cushions, but that's why I keep the denim covers on them, because we don't really know the origin story of these couches. The provenance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of these couches. <laughs> what was the family of origin that made these smell the way they did? So, uh, what, what raccoon did what on what? <laughs> so, between these, like, between these, these pea couches and, you know, like, the spatulas from 1994, he also had this art hanging up that was like, it was, it was very much like high school art. Like, somebody, like, I feel like everybody in high school has to do one art project where they have to draw something with charcoal. You know, like, mm-hmm. so it was like a framed charcoal drawing on of a like, grid. Yeah, exactly. The grid. Perfect. Perfect example. It's like a grid drawing of a hand, like grabbing a peace sign. And there's like a blood splatter. It's like a, a high school student's mm-hmm. like, like statement S- on like symbolism. peace and war. Yeah. And it was, it was fucking hideous. And there was like uh, another thing. I don't even remember what it was at this point, but it was, oh, it was something his sister did where it was like this giant, like hand painted face of like a model. It's just really odd. And whenever we'd have people come over, it was always like you'd get comments yeah there's like can you explain this i'm like i can't then i had to like talk about how like i you know it's my roommates and i made sure he's not around so he couldn't hear me complaining about it and this is always a big rigmarole so there was we lived behind or in front of the empire center which i assume you've been there before the big target i was there uh, the day before yesterday oh excellent great wonderful so you're familiar. It's basically a big outdoor mall but retail you lived, compound. But it only faces one way, mm-hmm. right? As we were on the other side behind. of the railroad tracks. So if we wanted to get to it, we had to drive around the railroad tracks. Oh, but if, so you lived on the side of downtown Burbank, essentially. No, right? we lived on. Uh, we lived next to the Costco. So if you know, the Costco is yeah. by that bridge with yeah. the train tracks. Okay. And, and yes. The, and the fencing and everything. So. You can't cross those railroad tracks unless you go around to Buena Vista or unless you go underneath the bridge, which was oh, full yes. of pigeons and pigeon shit. No, the bridge by the gun, by the shooting range. By the shooting range, by right. that used car lot. So that goes behind yes. the Empire Center, mm-hmm. so the back only of all of those stores. Right, exactly. I'll say it. So it, we, always, okay. we always had to run under that bridge because it was caked with pigeon shit. I mean, like, and you had to do this weird, like, hop step maneuver yeah, to get over all of it. Fall, if basically. I can actually do a quick sidebar, yeah. the interesting part about there's the, the Best Buy there. Uh, they had the exact same address as us. They did. With the exception of we had West in front of ours, and they did not. It was West Victory versus, because it's Victory Boulevard meets Victory Place, which is- the, Of the Best Buy over there at Empire Center. Yeah. yeah. They were f- 1501. So what? You, people would drive up to your house? No, no, no. no. The, the opposite. Uh, so our mail would go our to Our mail sometimes would go there. If I ever got a package, it would just go to Best Buy sometimes. <gasps> and one time, it was a, it was right when the iPad mini came out, and oh I had gotten God. one for my girlfriend, I needed to get a case for it and so i ordered it online and it never came and and then i i called ups or fedex or whatever and they're like no it it came like someone signed for it i was like who signed for someone it? someone knew it was an and, ipad mini and stole it with a fake signature and it had gone to best buy and they had put it on the shelf 
to sell. And I was like, no, that's mine. They're like, oh, we thought it was kind of weird that this came in. I was like, we thought Apple was just sending us one like, at a time to sell. Me? And they're like, but they're like, no, no, no. Apparently it came with a whole bunch of stuff. Like, oh, uh, it was like, like so bundled in. It was like bundled Whoa. with other things. Amazon just messed up their ordering. How I don't know how they do it, but it went to the wrong place in yeah. a box of stuff. Oh. So, and then you're trying to sell it. I was like, no, it's mine. So I'm Aaron. That just is what that is. Yeah. Like you, that never ceased. They got, I mean, they got like letters like that were addressed to well, us. That's got, the like, thing. Bills. There's countless things we don't know that they got because it's mm-hmm. not like, I'm sure they just saw it and be like, well, this is garbage. Yeah, threw it in the trash. And it's like, there, there have been things over the years where it's just always been like, I wonder what happened to that thing. The post office is so unreliable and it's just in a my, garbage bin at Best Buy. My buddy had gotten Laker tickets uh, a few years back and he ordered them in Iowa and to send them to my place so we, because they, they wouldn't do like the, you couldn't like print them off yourself yeah. for whatever reason. And we never got them. Some best, some best Buy employee got Laker tickets. And after I found out that the iPod mini case went to Best Buy, I was like, it absolutely went to. That's yeah. how we like, kind of figured it out. Totally. But it's like all these other things over the years, like countless things. Who knows? Oh, my God. So uh, at the Empire Center, there at one point in time was a Sabaros, and uh, it had gone out of business, and they'd cleared the whole thing out. And, at uh, Empire Center? Yeah, it's where uh, it's it's sort of by where the subway is now and the oh, Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, I remember in between Best Buy and what used to be Great Indoors. Yeah, mm-hmm. yes. So uh, it's it, the big Sbarros, glass walls, and as as you would often find in an Empire Center, everything there is like glass, uh, and so you could always peer in and see like the the deconstruction and like the the rot of this abandoned Sbarros, and uh, the only thing left standing in there was this one giant 40 inch by 40 inch framed photograph of a slice of pizza that they had hanging up amidst the menu <laughs> so and walking back and forth we have this odd propensity to like try to do pranks or just silly things that just tend to get out of hand and i saw this and was like oh you know it'd be so funny is if i could get that and hang it up on the wall kind of as like a gotcha to justin because like his art is so bad and now i'm bringing back like uh, an old moldy like pizza painting from from Sabaros. so I don't really know how to go about getting it, and I see that there is a leasing uh, sign Whoa. up there, like a, like a company uh, that you can rent. I don't know what I'm trying to Sensing say. Sensing an effort. Yeah, here. it was it was a big effort, and this was when I was working nights, and and uh, so I had mornings to myself. So I <laughs> I was like, I've got the time to pull this off. So I call the the leasing company. And I think it was a Saturday when I decided to do this. So, of course, nobody was in. And I went through their entire, like, the phone tree of, like, names and numbers and just left voicemail messages for every person at that company. So, it was, like, 001, whatever person's yeah. name was. would Every you know, extension. Exactly. Known. And uh, I said, hey, you know, I, I, I'm uh, my name is Ben Lepley. Uh, I'm uh, uh, just at your Sbarro's. Uh, I'm noticing that there's a, a pizza painting. I just would like to buy it. Rambling like a, an insane person. Leave this message, like about 30 God, times that is insane on the walk home and uh like a couple mondays later i would totally forgotten about all of this and i get a call from a guy very very brisk or brusque and he's like uh <laughs> one is brisk you're very brisk hello uh, man i've got your, I've got your number brother piece of lip, <laughs> lipton iced tea uh representative <laughs> um and he <laughs> he was like i'm calling for ben <laughs> something about something about a pizza painting like what it, what's going on and uh, I wonder if they all had gotten together and be like, you got the message too? Yeah. And they were I, trying to figure it out. Like, like who's, who's going to call this guy? Yeah. Or like, <laughs> I, I, yeah. But it's like, he he wasn't like bemused. Like, he was like angry that this was a thing. So <laughs> he, he was, was like. all WTF. Yeah. He's like, yeah. what do you want? So uh, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm like, uh, I'm a movie producer. And I'm, <laughs> a, I'm filming a movie that takes place in an Italian restaurant. And I'm like, and my art director needs a <laughs> pizza painting picture to hang on the set. I'm just thinking this would be easier. Than, than telling the truth. Than telling Listen, it. Yeah. I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, what total fucking lie, what but. what like what real movie producer would ever be like oh i talked to my art director a and i b i know a, a, a th- singular thing he needs for the set and c i'm gonna spend money to buy it out of an abandoned storefront anyway this guy's like whatever he didn't even care about the the lie he's just like i don't know he's like listen listen can you can you come tomorrow eight in the morning i'm like uh yeah sure he's like you got cash i'm like <gasps> yeah he's like I'll give it to you for a hundred bucks. I was like, uh, okay, yeah, I can pay a hundred dollars for that. <laughs> He's like, okay, show up at eight o'clock with the cash and we'll figure something out. Hangs up. Doesn't even say goodbye. Next morning, 
it's summer, you know, like I, I've got these mornings off, drive over there at eight o'clock and there's this kid standing outside in like a button up shirt. I pull my car up, I get out and he sees me and goes, you Ben? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, man, what's going on? He's like, you got the cash? I'm like, yeah. Take a wad of cash out of my pocket, hand it to him. He unlocks the door, opens it. He goes, it's all yours. And I walk in and I take the pizza painting or photo. It's not really a painting. It's a photograph. It's very heavy. It's giant frame. So awkward because it's fucking 40 inches by 40 inches. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is unwieldy. Take it back to my car and it will not fit in the car. It won't fit in the back seat. It won't fit in the trunk. And I turn back to the kid and I'm like, hey, can you uh, help me with this? He goes, it's your problem now, man. <laughs> Locks the door, gets in his car and drives away. So at this point, I'm like, well, fuck. Like, I, what am I going to, I mean, it's, uh, I guess I have to walk back with this. It's like a 20 minute walk. I'm like, well, what I'll do first is I'll go to Michael's and I'll get a cord put on the back. I'll get, so I can like a wire so I can like hang it on the wall. So I lumber over to like fucking Michael's with this thing on my back and I take it in. I take it to the back. I'm like, hey, could you put a wire on this? And they're like, where's that from? Oh, it's the Sabaros over there. Oh, did they go out of business? Yeah. Oh, I used to get lunch there. Blah, blah, blah. Small talk, so forth. Put this wire on it. I'm like, this is perfect because with this wire, I'll be able to use the tensile strength of the wire to carry it like with my hands. Ow. That way I won't have to balance it myself. I go back outside. That took about 30 minutes to 45 minutes. At this point, the sun is fully up. So it is like... 85 degrees like on and a bur- only getting hot hotter. Burbank morning yeah only getting hotter exactly so I go outside and I grab this thing by the wire and I try to hoist it up and it's so heavy the wire is like yeah, cutting, cutting into my, my flesh first, yeah, yeah my palm so I'm like well I don't uh Mommy. Okay. I, I, I started this prank. I'm going to finish it out. So I, I put this on my back like Christ with the cross. Like, so my arms are out like stretched. And it's so heavy as I'm yeah, walking. You're losing your center. I, I like use, I use the weight of the painting to like move my steps. legs. So it's like I thrust a leg out and the weight of the thing on my back like carries it down. Yeah. Ba-dunk, ba-dunk. And it is this, I'm going at like. Point oh oh four miles per hour <laughs> with this thing on my back, and then like it, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. So then I I try to like lift the painting up so that it can shade me, but then I'm holding it up with like rigid arms, and my elbows start giving out, and my legs are getting tired, and my knees are getting tired, God. and I get to that pigeon shit bridge yes, that I have to walk I was under. Anticipating this. Oh yeah, the worst. And I'm like, then I have to like try to sprint under it and make sure no pigeon shit gets on it. And at this point, a guy it's just about around the gun range. A guy drives by and he lays on his horn <laughs> and he goes, nice pizza painting, asshole. He <laughs> called I, you an asshole? He called me an asshole because this, I had a pizza painting. This town. Uh, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a tough town, Steve. That's tough. I yeah. mean, I can understand nice pizza painting, but I don't know that that makes you an asshole. I don't, I don't understand why I was called an I, asshole. I, I want you to retell this story, but make that be the kid. <laughs> <laughs> and it's holding your money up. <laughs> yeah, it's him. Well, we'll get, we're coming back to that, but go on. <laughs> so I continue to lumber through the Costco parking lot to try to save time. That takes longer because it's a billion goof tunes of cars trying to park and cut each other off. I eventually get back. And I'm drenched in sweat and I put this giant fucking joke down on the ground with the clatter and I'm like pitting out. I'm so sweaty. And I'm like, oh, my God, I have to go get my fucking car <laughs> so I had to walk back. I didn't have a painting on my back this time, but it was still like the worst walk yeah, ever because it's like back into tired. the heat. Yeah, totally. Your muscles were all shaking. I've been I've been called an asshole for no reason. So then I, I get my car. I drive back. But it's still not over because I realize like, oh, my God, this is like this thing's filthy. It's been hanging in a Sbarro's for like, you yeah, know, how the, the duration of that thing's existence. Yeah, crust dust on it. <laughs> nice crust dust. <laughs> yeah, flour. Yep, totally. So I take I take a, uh, a paper towel and I wet it and I start to wipe it down and one pass and I take the paper towel away and it is black. jet black, jet black. And so I start scrubbing and I use like an entire roll of paper towels, just blackening them with like this whatever cancerous, like fake Italian, whatever. Yeah. And by the time Tar. I'm done, this thing, the only thing that made it look like pizza was that grease. It was actually, it's so sun bleached. The cheese is like bright white. Yes. Like it's dis- it's foul looking. Like it's so gross, which I guess works for the prank because it's like, it's even grosser than I thought it was. But there's something after all that work, I'm like, God, it doesn't even really look like pizza. It's been cooking like through like Burbank glass all like uh, every day for like the past however many years. So, you know, I, I hang it up and. Justin eventually comes home and I'm like, hey man, notice anything different? And he looks at it and he's just like, uh, 
Huh. Just goes to his room. Absolutely no reaction. But the benefit of doing this was it was the biggest conversation starter ever of that apartment because anyone who came over afterwards got to hear this entire story. And at first we realized we didn't have to answer what it was because they're like, what is that? And I'd just be like, well, what do you think it is? And it's so sun bleached. One guy actually was like, oh, it's sea turtles. I'm like, it's sea turtles. He's like, yeah, look, it's and I'm like, no, man, it's pizza. And he does this long blink and he's like, oh, you're right. I'm like, no, wait, 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 wait. Explain to me how you thought that was sea turtles. He goes, my brain literally can't see them now. Like it can't recall how it misinterpreted these as sea turtles. So it's, that's, I love that. And we, we've actually had, Ben had told me that because that was before I had moved out here. But then once I did move out here, someone else came over and was like, it said that they looked like sea turtles. And we both had known that story and we're like, someone else also? Yeah, and we, we tried squinting at it. We tried turning the lights off. Like we can't see these what sea turtles. What you're forgetting is that I have not seen this. Oh painting. yeah, and that damn! It's in the other room, yeah, after and when after this, this is time, over in the postcast, part of the postcast, <laughs> he's gonna be, get to see it. I'll be wiping myself off from all the sweat I've been accumulating. <laughs> real, real drenched, guys. What Sorry. else were we gonna talk about in the postcast? Sorry, just briefly. Uh, we had something that was gonna come up. Oh, was it the uh, the production idea for the uh, mass producing those commercial Your kit? The, the camera, the, kit? the camera kit, the on, the on camera kit. Maybe that now you it. don't need to move from the Midwest to California to audition for commercials. Oh my God! We can tear this um, down apart. <clears throat> so, wait a second. Yeah, now it's time for Steve's corner. Been, like, okay, now I'm going to be our friend Jacob. I don't think that story's funny <laughs> because you would never spend a hundred dollars on a prank. What the fuck were you thinking? A hundred? You didn't even want to talk to guy. Steve, I was twenty five. I was clinically depressed at the time. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a reason. A hundred dollars. I just uh, to be totally honest. You were I, middle. You didn't want to wheel and deal. You were. I thought to be totally honest. He's a movie producer. I, <laughs> yeah. Now let me tell you the truth. I'll I was producing rolled by Sony producing yeah, a listen. film that takes place in an Italian restaurant. I no like I I honestly thought At I, the I, New Jersey State Aquarium. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> Jesus Christ! I know. I just like. I was so tickled by my own thought that this would be such it a didn't funny prank to you. I was, I would have paid you were anything. Rolling in the dough, honestly. I just, I, I, I just am surprised that you didn't even say, well, how about fifty? There may have been some potential wheeling and dealing. Honestly, that's not a part of the story I remember. But I think I was also very intimidated by the man who called because he sounded like he was part of the Ominous. mafia. Yeah, and it was like. Who are you? What the fuck are you calling and leaving voicemail yeah. messages here about? I'm you like, should have uh, kicked in the glass. Yeah. <laughs> we, we actually we, it. we talked about that. We were like, man, we could have saved some money if we just threw like a concrete fuck, block through yeah. this so that yeah, no one would have cared except for until the, you couldn't fit it in your car. Yeah, exactly. Then it, then the, the long showing the long walk like, with glass cuts all over me. I think um, the icing on the cake of that story is in the lower left hand corner. Claude Monet has been. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I looked. I looked up Claude Monet's signature online, and then I took a sharpie and like mimicked his <laughs> his signature on oh it. Oh my god, I can't wait. It's an original. Yeah. What if you go into the kitchen and it's nothing's there? We made this entire fucking thing up. Oh, then I'll be really impressed. That was a very natural. <laughs> oh good, telling. good, good. I got that from all my years of improv training, expert talking exercises. I uh, know your years of ad lib training. Yeah, by ad, yeah. <laughs> ad lib one hundred and one. I did the ad lib program. <laughs> At, uh, advanced, at, the, at the Fresh Faces advanced Conservatory. Ad-lib. An advanced ad lib. <laughs> at Actors Boot Camp. It's an eight hour ad lib intensive. Uh. <laughs> taught by one of our graduates. You know what? Here's the thing Who you, could, you could absolutely put that class out and turn a tidy profit in this town. You totally could. Ad libs, man. Ad libs for eight commercials. Hour ad lib intensive yep. taught by one of our graduates who went to producers. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've had so much success with my ad libs. I, I can't like, even tell you. It's a real. It makes a real difference in my booking ratio. I feel like that's what some people do. Like they think of these classes and they're like, "How else can we milk this town for more money?" Oh, totally. Like oh, yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. Ninety-five percent of the classes out here are just they're hilarious. Um, we even have like like postcards out under our mailboxes for them right now. I don't know if you saw it. Like we're just getting like, they're not even being put into our mailbox. They're just being like left or scattered around like bird seed. Like, <laughs> like pigeon shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Steve, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so this much. Steve. Such a hoot. Thank you. Happy not father's day. Yes. Ha- happy generic day. Comfortable, cool townhouse. Spectacular here. Thank I you so much. Enjoyed my time. Great. 
Well, you've been listening to Ben and Aaron's Tonight Show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ben and Aaron. This is Ben and Aaron Tonight. Uh, you can uh, follow this podcast on Twitter at Kren Benz. That's C H R E N B E N S. You can also follow Aaron Krennen on Twitter at Krennen, C H R E N E N. Or you can follow me on. Uh, what is it called again oh right twitter at white bathrobe uh which is spelled like how you would spell white bathrobe if you were looking at one in a land's end catalog and wanted to place the order yeah <laughs> back I'll to 94 you right now 